Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Alpha Drinking Coffee with Friends. Um, it sounds so fake when I do that, when I do that intro. Uh, <laughs> um, today we have Alexander Mills from at Alexander Mills on Instagram and yep. alexandermills.coffee um, online. Um, we've this is actually the first time that we've managed to see each other or talk to each other on person. We've yeah. constantly been in contact over Instagram and uh, we were literally just talking about this, that it's interesting given the situation that we're in, given the pandemic, um, the one slight positive that's come out of it is that we've actually been able to have some decent conversations and basically take some more time to talk to people that we normally didn't get a chance to before. Um, yeah. So anyways, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, man. Um, um, that was a lot of, that was a long intro, I know. Um, so tell me about yourself. Tell me about uh, what it is that you do in coffee or tell us about it. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, Alfred, thank you so much for having me. Uh, and I totally just want to echo what you said. Like it's been, it's just such a wild time we're living through. Um, I mean, unprecedented, definitely in our lifetime. And I've been really thankful for the ways that communities of all different kinds have come together during this time. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like we've never, you and I have never had the chance to meet. We live in the same country, but it's a big one. Uh, we live on opposite sides. And so we've never been in the same place at the same time. But here we are, um, thanks to the internet, thanks to Zoom. So uh, it's really cool to be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm Alexander Mills. Um, I have a, I run a coffee blog of sorts uh, in two versions. So on my blog at alexandermills.coffee, but also on Instagram, which um, is one of my favorite places to spend time. I really do love the coffee community on Instagram, which I'm sure we can talk about uh, later because I feel like you're one of the uh, OGs of the coffee culture on Instagram, especially let's, in Canada. Let's but take it easy with that, but sure. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm writing about coffee and, and basically just trying to help people brew better coffee at home. I mean, you can see it. It's on my shirt. It says brew better coffee. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's the opportunity I think that everybody has. Surely everyone who's listening to this podcast, whether it's you or I who've been brewing coffee for years or somebody who, who knows you or I personally and is listening to this podcast because they know us and they've never brewed manually co manual coffee at home before. Yeah. We all can be brewing better coffee at home. So I'm just trying to help people do that. That's honestly... What else can you ask for, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I also do love the fact that both of us decided to wear our brands today. Yes, uh, <laughs> I love that shirt. It was well planned. Well yeah. planned. Not like I'm advertising Alpha Drinking Coffee <laughs> at all. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's awesome. So, you like your background actually isn't in coffee, right? Like, what what do you do day to day? Yeah, that is a great question. I do a few things. A lot of people who follow me online assume I work in coffee. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess I did. Right. And I guess like, I mean, the internet's like that, right? You kind of project what you want people to see. Yeah. Um, and so on Instagram, that's, that's what I project. It's all coffee talk all the time. I talk about my family a bit too, but nothing, no really of my other personal interests yeah. um, or even my job because I don't work in coffee. Yeah. Um, and so I do a few things. I'm a pastor, actually. My wife and I oh, pastor cool. a church out here with my parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also work for a, a company called Pro Church Tools. And basically what we do is help churches, we like to say it this way, uh, navigate the biggest communication shift in the last 500 years. So basically mm -hmm. helping churches uh, figure out how to use the internet. So we have a few software products and, and stuff that we help churches uh, use to, to communicate their story and their message. But, uh, so that's what I do by day. And then by night, I basically just drink and write about coffee. So. <laughs> Honestly, a split personality thing going on, I guess. I like it, man. I like it. Look, one thing that I've noticed from talking to a lot of people on Instagram and talking to a lot of people online, um, first of all, talking to people online, maybe 10 years ago, sounded like just talking to creepers online. Right. Now it's like a real thing. It's yeah. good. Uh, but yeah, talking to people online, you realize that there's so much more depth than what people portray, like you were saying. Yeah. Also, love your mug. Uh, you. <laughs> um, and we've we've gotten to a point where where we're more than just our personalities, right? Like mm -hmm. for me, this this entire platform, the whole point of me creating the video blog 
or the video podcast more so than the actual podcast is for people to actually see that I'm more than just like a stoic face on Instagram. <laughs> right, right. Um, and I'm more than just coffee, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of things that we can talk about. There's a lot of different dynamics and different things that come up in our lives. We're not just one thing. And it's, yeah. it's great to know that the coffee community isn't, isn't just people that are just in coffee. It's it's well adapted and it's grown to a point where people that aren't working in coffee are also super heavily involved in, in coffee as a whole. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's super diverse. And, and you know what, I don't really think there's anything wrong with that. Like choosing no. what you project online. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of people in like the church space who know me personally ask me like, Hey Alex, like, why don't you talk about, you know, church stuff online or, or this stuff online, this and that. And I said, well, cause I just don't have the capacity. I can't talk about everything. I got to choose one yeah. thing and, and run with it. Right. Yeah. And so I've chosen coffee and, and that's what I, that's, that's what I portray online, not in a dishonest way, mm -hmm. uh, but just like in a selective way. Yeah. And I think that can be done in, in, yeah, like a healthy way. Um, because we all, our lives are so multifaceted. We are real people, right? Yeah. And, and that's why I love having these conversations. I mean, we're having this one publicly. People are going to listen to this, which is awesome. But I've had so many conversations and built so many like, like real legitimate friendships mm -hmm. through Instagram with people that I've never met in person. Some people I will never meet. Um, you know, there's a guy that, that I've struck up a friendship with through Instagram and through coffee. We FaceTime like every other day. Like we're like, if we lived in the same place, we'd be like, like BFFs. Right. Yeah. Um, so there is a way to have, you know, substantive relationships online. And I think the coffee community mm -hmm. is like personifies that better than a lot of other communities I belong to online. And I think that's something really special. It, it really is. And I've, I definitely agree with you, like talking to people that you normally wouldn't have and you build these friendships that are lasting, right? Like yeah. I, I have a few friends that I've met through Alpha Drinking Coffee specifically and just social media as a whole. And we've connected to a point where like we see each other constantly. We go meet up for cop, meeting up for coffee, obviously, or we'll meet up for drinks or whatever it is. And we just, we constantly meet up, constantly updating each other on our lives and and we've become friends more so than just people online talking to one another. And that yeah. in itself is huge. So good. Yeah. Um, okay. So big question, um, because I know that you drink almost as much, if not more so than I do in terms of coffee. <laughs> yeah. And that's um, a lot. <laughs> um, so two things, first of all, okay, let's, let's figure this out. What is yeah. your average amount of coffee a day? Okay. So I'm a pretty like regimented guy. I wake up at the same time every day, 5:45. the alarm goes up. I'm up. Okay. And like, first thing I do is make a cup of coffee. So before uh, COVID-19 happened and before I was working from home, mm -hmm. I was on a, a two cup a day schedule. So basically seven and seven or okay. six and six, okay. uh, one in the morning, one in the evening. Caffeine doesn't really affect me mm -hmm. um, as far as like keeping me awake. Uh, for better or for worse, you know, at night it's nice when I want to go to bed, but when I'm driving and I need to stay awake, it's not helpful. <laughs> um, so I was a two a day guy, but now dude, like it's, it's bad. I like today, like this cup I'm having right now is cup number four. And I'm ashamed of that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, like to make you feel a little bit better, like for me, I usually was, I, I started my day off a little bit later than you six o'clock okay and, <laughs> right there. um and i i wasn't functional until i had my first cup of coffee mm -hmm. i'm usually not functional until like 10 a.m anyways but more so without that coffee so i would have i would make a cup of coffee for my drive to work okay um whatever it was and don't don't hate me for this but i do use that nespresso in the morning every once yep. in a while because quick and easy man quick and easy it gets me that good everyday coffee i'm happy with it you know yeah. um i've had some people like lash out at me for using a machine or whatever <laughs> i'm like it's a good it's a good cup of coffee yeah uh, <laughs> so i usually use that first thing in the morning on my drive to work make it to work i have to brew a full french press if someone shares with me at work great if not then i'm drinking a full fresh press on my own <laughs> not a big deal and then by like an hour before lunch, around like 11, I'll have another cup of coffee just to power through. 
and then nice. after lunch i'll if i need it i'll have that uh, that extra coffee so i was averaging three to four okay um more so on the four side uh, yeah. when i was working now it's just become two to three max so okay. i've cut down wow so you've um, gone the other way but it could just be that my mugs are a lot bigger and they laugh. <laughs> yeah i'm drinking a liter at a time yeah. but only twice a day so it's fine <laughs> I, but it's still one at a time right like it's yeah. still it still counts yeah yeah um so if that makes you feel any better, you know? It um, does. It does. I'm concerned because I don't know if I'm going to be able to go back. Okay. You know, like when, when I get back to the office and I kind of get back into that nine to five routine, yeah. am I going to be able to get back to two cups a day or am I going to keep up three cups a day? Um, I, I don't know. I, it's less about like, it's less about having the coffee or the money to buy the coffee. It's just more about like my body. It's like, is my body okay with this? <laughs> To be fair, I question my body a lot about a lot of things. <laughs> it's like, are you okay? And usually yeah. the answer is no. So, <laughs> so I just let it go. I just go yeah. with it. Three, four cups of coffee, whatever. It's fine. Yeah. Um, okay. So big question. What is your favorite coffee right now? Okay. So that's, that's, uh, that's an impossible question to answer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'll tell you. Okay. I'll talk about the coffee I'm having right now. How about sure. that? Sure, that works. Um, because I have a lot of tremendous coffees on my bar. I'm really privileged, really blessed to have access to great coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people send me coffee, which is just amazing. And so I've always have I always have a lot of really good coffee on my bar. But this one um, is kind of unique because it was a mystery coffee. So I've got a friend Jake uh, who actually lives out near you. He lives on the island, oh. and he's the founder of Revy Coffee, the coffee oh, subscription. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so we've struck up. Um, He's one of those guys that I've struck up a really good, legitimate friendship with uh, online. We chatted on FaceTime today for a while. <laughs> and so I bought, um, I bought some coffee from him last week. And he's done this before. He'll send me the coffee, but he sends me two little packets of mystery coffee mm -hmm. with no information on it other than the roast date. Oh. And it's like this little game he plays with me. So I'll brew it. And then I'll call him and be like, hey, this is my experience. This is what I think it is. And he tells me if I'm right or wrong. Mm -hmm. So this is my first time brewing this coffee today. Uh, well, this is my second cup. Uh, the first cup was I had mid-afternoon. Um, and so when I took the beans out of the bag, it smelled like a Central or South American. Uh, I ground the beans, and when they were dry, it smelled just like brown sugar. Like if I mm. held up a cup of brown sugar to you, I'm not sure if you would have been able to tell the difference. And then when I brewed the coffee, um, so I was thinking, I'll, I wrote it down in my little notebook, Ecuador, or uh, maybe Peru. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to say something like as common as Colombia or Guatemala because yeah. I didn't think he would do that to me. Yeah. So then I started tasting the coffee and it had a really pleasant acidity that reminded me of a lot of really good Colombian coffees I had. So that was my final guess. I, I called him on Facebook and I said, I think it's, this is my experience. I think it's a Colombian. He says, are you sure? And I said, yeah. And he says, no, it's actually from Ecuador. And so that was my first guess. It was the first copy I wrote down in my book, but it wasn't my final answer. Always go with your gut, man. Yeah. Always go with your gut. Yeah. So I kind of blew it. But anyways, it's a, it's a Carmen uh, Tapia Ecuador from Calendar Coffee, and they are in Ireland in Galway. Oh, okay. And anyways, this coffee, it's washed. It's outrageous. It, um, it just is really balanced, really, uh, really has a lot of clarity for an Ecuadorian coffee. Mm -hmm. And when it cools it transforms into like what reminds me of lychee fruit, which I had a lot of when I was in mm, Vietnam. Yeah. It's like one of my favorite fruits. So this coffee is just, he gave me 40 grams and I've brewed through all 40 grams today. So that's how good it is. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> if you go through the 40 grams at, at once, you know that it's a good coffee, right? Yeah. When I, when I made it through that first cup, I enjoyed it so much. I wanted to have, I wanted to have it again right away, but I was like, no, I need, just need to sit with this for a while. <laughs> And uh, when I knew I was jumping on with you tonight, I thought it was a good occasion. So yeah. uh, cheers to, cheers. to you. This is the last uh, few grams this of is water, virtual but cheers. Cheers you to go. you. <laughs> um, last 40 grams of this special coffee. I love it, man. Well, congrats on the special coffee. Uh, yeah. No, my, mine lately, again, it's a, it's a tough call. It's a tough, it's a tough question just because yeah. you and I, we get a lot of coffee sent to us. Yeah. And side note to that, I don't know if I could ever give up this gig of like, right. reviewing coffee because <laughs> I, need I can't coffee. go back to paying for coffee. Like it's just, 
it's just mind boggling. Like I have stores and stores of coffee. Yeah. And just being able to have that selection, it's not even about the paying or whatever, like happy to support companies as yeah. a whole, but the amount of coffee that I have, I can just wake up and feel like a Columbia today. I can I know, feel like, like you, you have the whole world at your fingertips. Right? <laughs> And now I'm just like, okay, if I ever stop this coffee reviewing thing, what is my life? What am I supposed to do with my caffeine fix? Because that's going to yeah. last forever. That's yeah. not going to go anywhere. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I actually just got a package from Quietly Coffee. Oh, love it. Um, I love Lee. He's, he's roasting really, really so, great coffee. So good. Um, they sent me like four bags to get me through the quarantine and yep. love them for it. I tried this one. It's the Rwandan that they have. Yep. Um, it has plum notes, and I, I'm a sucker for plum notes, right? It's just, yeah. it's one of those. It's so rare that I just, I can't say no to. Yeah. Um, and it has this nougaty, like caramelly flavor, like chocolatey flavor to it, and they related to a Twix bar, and that instantly just brought in the childhood. I'm like, yeah, love my Twix, um, and cherry cola as well. Oh, right? so good. So, so somehow it's complex and balanced at the same time. Yeah. And just so satisfying to drink. Yeah. Uh, so that, that sounds was, delicious. Right. I'll, hey, I can send you some if you want. You let, hey, you I, let I wouldn't say I wouldn't say no to that. I um I I do really enjoy quietly coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, Lee is a guy. He's roasting. I think he's just north of Toronto, uh, so that's not too far from me. I'm just down in Niagara Falls. And so I've had a chance to have his, his coffee a few times. Mm -hmm. I haven't had uh, some of his new lineup, which that Rwanda is on, which I, I kind of have been eyeing because Rwanda is one of those countries um, uh, much similar to Burundi or even the Congo, uh, Uganda, mm -hmm. um, kind of in that, that central African region, like East Central Africa, right around Lake Victoria, which right on the other side, you have some of the best coffee growing regions in the world in Ethiopia, Kenya, and Tanzania. Yeah. But on the Western side of the lake, there are these, these lesser renowned uh, coffee growing countries. And I think part of the struggle is they lack infrastructure. I know this to be true in Burundi and same in Rwanda, they lack infrastructure to export the coffee. Yeah. So like the land is ready to grow you know, top quality coffee and, and the weather is there for it. And the elevation is there. It's very mountainous and the farmers are there, but they just don't have the infrastructure to get that high quality coffee out of the country. Yeah. And so it's been really nice to see over the last few years, especially out of Burundi, there's so many good coffees coming out of Burundi mm -hmm. and Rwanda just seem, seems to be a couple steps behind Burundi, but I have had a few Rwandans yeah. um, that have been really, really nice. And it's, I find them similar to Kenyans uh, where you get some of that, stone fruit stuff going on like the plums yeah. you talked about yeah but with with a bigger almost like more caramelized body yes. and less of like uh the lime type acidity like that acidity. you would get from yeah. a kenyan yeah which some which turns some people totally off my wife loves really good quality coffee mm -hmm. but she's not a big fan of kenyans because that acidity is just a little bit too much for her yeah um and so i think rwandans could could fall right into the sweet spot there well, let's hope that they actually like get to the point where their their infrastructure is there. And like you were saying, there are a couple steps behind Burundi, right? Yeah. So if they get to a point where that infrastructure is built out, we could pro we could possibly see uh, more of their coffees coming out. Yeah. One aspect to that too that I've found, um, and actually me and Gravy were talking about this a little while ago, um, and it's that the coffee community as a whole whether it's farmers or, or roasters or just people sourcing coffee, they all have culminated, like they all culminated into the ability to work together. And I find that we're at a point now where within the coffee culture and the coffee community, we can help Rwanda or any of those company, those mm -hmm. countries that are, are trying to outsource those coffees or not outsource, sorry, source those coffees. Yeah, um, we're actually able to speed up the process and get them to a point where they can so basically export those coffees as much as possible, right? Um, yeah. And the more that the more that the community actually helps, the more it's likely that these processes and these trials and errors that most com countries have gone through, um, it won't be that much of an issue. Yeah, 
there's a coffee producer, one of my favorite coffee producers uh, called Long Miles Coffee Project. Mm -hmm. And they, they only work in Burundi, oh. which is amazing. So they've like chosen a country that they've, they've recognized um, there's a lack of infrastructure, systems and structures to whether it's at farm level or, or import export level, wherever it is, yeah. they've acknowledged that you know, there's, there's, there's kind of a, a lack here and we can, if we hone in on this country, not try and serve every coffee producing country, but mm -hmm. hone in on, on this country and, and elevate uh, the farmers and the producers that are there struggling to get this coffee out. Not only can we bring great coffee out of Burundi to folks like you and me here in Canada, but more importantly, we can provide a living wage and a sustainable future for the folks who are farming um, you know, this agriculture in, in their native land. And so I really love the work that Long Miles Coffee Project has done in Burundi to elevate the folks who are living and working there. Mm -hmm. I would love to see um, kind of laser focused projects like that happen um, within the confines of a single country like Rwanda, like the Congo, like yeah. Uganda. Yeah. Well, let's, let's hope that is transferable, right? Mm -hmm. that, that system works in Burundi. Right. And it, they build it to a point where it's it's completely established and all you have to do is maintain at that point. And then they take that over to the next country that really needs that that work. Right? Sure. So we'll we'll see. Hopefully something good comes out of it. Right. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. that's the goal. Yeah. Um, OK. So we talked about favorite coffee right now. Mm -hmm. um, what is your favorite brewing method right now? Yeah, I mean, if anyone's followed me for any <laughs> amount of time, I know. No, it's no secret that I, I have a love affair with the Hario V60. Mm -hmm. um, I have plenty of brew methods. Some would say I have too many. I, I have just- <laughs> is, the, is there too many though? Is I, there too no, many? I, you and I both don't think so, but some <laughs> people might think there is, which is fine. Um, but I have just about every pour over brew method that, that there is, um, you know, without duplicating ones that are slightly different from each other. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I really do, I think there's a time and place for all of them, uh, especially the ones that, that find a place in my bar and, and stay there. Mm -hmm. I've, I've decided like there is a, a certain application for you. Um, but when it comes to brewing every day, I love the Hario V60. It is, it's a brewer that I recommend to people to get started up with. Um, but if I'm being honest, it's not the safest brewer to start with. I was, I wouldn't say so. No, yeah. it's not. And, and I was chatting with someone today about the, like the Kalita wave, which is a, a similar kind of conical shaped pour over brewer, but has a flat bottom. Mm -hmm. And that flat bottom really helps to, I like to say it this way, to cover a multitude of sins. And what I mean by that is the flat bottom it encourages an even extraction. So you could have a bit of a, a, a poor grind size or an uneven pour, and that flat bottom is really just going to compensate for your human errors. And for folks who are just getting started with pour over brewing, that's what you need, right? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. But I think the Hario V60, it just opens up the door to more nuance mm -hmm. from just about every coffee. And that's kind of the journey that I'm on uh, to explore coffee in a way that I can can really perceive the different nuance between each coffee and appreciate it for what it is. And so I find for me, the Hario V60 does that. It is a little bit more tricky to dial in. Uh, the margin for error is a little bit more slim, but I find that when you do dial it in, the payoff is more rewarding than just about anything else. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're also super cheap. Like the the plastic one, you can get on Amazon for like ten or twelve bucks, and you don't need like I use a you know like a glass server, but you just brew it into a mug or, or your travel mug, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love the AeroPress. I think the AeroPress is the most versatile uh, home brewer. Uh, it's virtually indestructible. You can take it with you anywhere you go. Um, if you say but, that, and now people are going to try to smash it on the ground to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then write me when it breaks. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I was asking myself this question uh, a few a little while ago, I was saying like, okay, I love the Hario V60, and anyone who follows me knows that. But mm -hmm. I want to know what the people who follow me, I want to know what they think is the best home brewer. So I don't know if you caught it, but I did uh, like a, a battle of the brewers yeah. bracket. Yeah. So it was like March Madness style. Um, <laughs> it, there were 16 seeds. Just coffee sports. Coffee yes. sports. <laughs> Look, it's, man, it's quarantine. Like we got we to gotta do something. There's literally no sports on TV. So I had to, I had to manufacture something. Yeah. 
And so I, I didn't want my opinion to be injected at all. I, I posted this bracket and said, okay, I want you to vote. So I used the Instagram polls feature and I let, you know, 6,000 people vote on what pour over home brewer they thought was the best. Mm -hmm. And the Hario V60 won decidedly. Like wow. it wasn't, it wasn't close. And, and so most of the people, at least who follow me are kind of in the same boat um, and think that it's the best, the best home brewer. Now the question wasn't, what is the most versatile home brewer? Or if you were stuck on an island for the rest of your life, what would what would your brewer of choice be? Because for me, it would be the AeroPress. Why? Because it's the most versatile. Yeah. But my favorite when I'm at the comfort of my own home uh, is the Hario V60. Okay. Okay. That's look. That's that's a fair answer. And honestly, <laughs> every time I watch your stories, anytime I watch your posts, it's all the Hario. That's all it ever is. And I yeah, I should it. change that up a little bit. Uh huh. I should change that up a little bit. I should start brewing. Never, ch stuff. never change. Never change. You're, you're fine. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's um, like me saying that you need to change it up because every time I look at your pictures, your face is always so stoic. I, <laughs> honestly, like there's gonna change. be one day. There's gonna be one day I will change just because, and people will be like, "Bring back the old Alfred." Yeah, just uh, <laughs> unfollow right away. Like, what is this smile? Dude, I have honestly, I've had these conversations with uh, with friends of mine, and I'm always telling them just take over my account for a week. Let's see if you do better than I do. If you do take it, it's fine. <laughs> it's your account. Just give me some coffee every once in a while. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but for me in terms of like brewing method, I'm like I said, I'm the kind of guy that efficiency is key. And if I don't have to put in a lot of effort to get a really good or perfect cup of coffee, I won't. Yeah. To be, to be fair. Um, the Hario V60, I don't have one. Um, just because I have, um, a Bodum pour over. Yep. So I feel like it's relatively similar, Totally. but, um, my biggest thing is I find that whether we're like, we're, t when we talk about the, the difference in, uh, in coffee, when you're brewing it or, or whatever it is, I don't feel like lots of people actually see those nuance nuances yep. a lot of people don't try those nuances unless they're ingrained in the coffee culture or totally. ingrained in coffee yep. right when we're talking about we drink two coffees a day or whatever um you saying two coffees a day i'm saying that i drink <laughs> like a crazy person um yep. we <laughs> we we're talking about coffees that we've instinctively learned what works for us yep um and even when talking to some of my friends or some some followers that are like, what what is the right grind that you use or what is how much do you use usually in terms of brewing or what have you, um, my my constant go to is that I eyeball it. Right. Does it come out exactly the same gram every time? No, but it's basically the same thing because I'm so used and my eyes are so in tune to seeing how much is right and how much is wrong. Sure. Um, but when you're first starting off, like you were saying, like when you're first starting off, the hurry is not that easy. Uh, but I also feel like if you, if you really want to go into pour overs, if you really want to get into, um, get into brewing in that method, you can't really screw it up as long as you have a good coffee. Yeah. Right. You'll yeah. have, you'll, you might not get all the extraction done right. You might not get everything done perfectly, but you'll still come out with a good cup of coffee. Sure. Right? Whereas yeah. we can differentiate between that good cup of coffee, the excellent cup of coffee, and the exceptional cup of coffee. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you're right. And I think I mean, that's it, the biggest thing. Yeah, you're, you're totally right. The, the, your ingredients are, are so much more important than, than the brew method that you use. You know, I, I know a lot of people are starting, especially because we're home all the time. Like you're either learning how to bake bread or you're learning how to make coffee. Like you're doing one of those two things. Yeah. And, and for the folks who are trying to learn how to brew coffee at home for the first time, a lot of people are going on Amazon and trying to buy an AeroPress or a V60 or a Chemex or whatever and realizing, oh yeah, I can buy it. But like Amazon's not going to get this to me for four, six, eight weeks because it's not essential. Like they're, yeah. they're shipping, you know, baby food to, to moms who need baby food. They're not shipping a Chemex to you mm -hmm. right now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so a lot of people are like, I want to start this journey, but I, I don't have all the fancy brew equipment that you have. I don't have a scale this and that. And, and you don't, you don't really need it 
if you have a good ingredient, which of course is coffee and also water. I think, I think water is, I mean, coffee is over 98% water. Mm-hmm. And I think that's easy to forget. A lot of folks will say, Hey, uh, this is my process. These are, and folks who know coffee really well, sending me messages saying, Hey, this is how I'm brewing. This is how my coffee is tasting. Can you help me? Mm-hmm. And I said, I'd love to help. You told me everything about your brew process, except about your water. Are, mm-hmm. are you getting your water right from the tap? Is it, distilled water is it filtered like what's going on mm-hmm. and when i give them some, some steps to improve their water quality they'll run me back and be like oh my gosh this coffee just opened up and i said well yeah it's 98 yeah. percent water of course <laughs> it's going to open up yeah. so starting with good water and good coffee is is going to get you almost all the way there oh for sure for sure i i agree i yeah. won't deny it i do use tap water all the time and i'm still happy with my coffee but when it comes down to it i will probably reach out to you and be like hey how do I improve my method? Sure. And you know what? You know what, dude? Like there, so I'll have lots of recommendations for you. Yeah. Um, but also like- <laughs> Basically saying that I'm not good. Okay, go no, ahead. No, no, but but some folks live in, like depending on where you live, you might actually have good quality tap water. Mm-hmm. And so here in Niagara, our tap water is actually not that bad. Okay. Um, but I, I know in some places in Canada, the water is just exceptionally hard. Mm-hmm. Um, which you'll notice in your kettle. If, if you're seeing kind of lime scale build up in the bottom of your kettle, it's because your water is exceptionally hard. Mm-hmm. And so you could simply buy some spring water from the store in those four liter jugs or those bigger ones yeah. and use that. And you'll take a step towards um, having better coffee. But some folks live in areas where the tap water is actually like pretty good quality mm-hmm. and is reasonable for, for making coffee with. And so it sounds like that's probably where you're living, which is yeah. awesome. <laughs> I, look, man, BC, we have some good, well, let's say the lower mainland in yeah. BC has really good tap water. So I'm, I'm awesome. happy with it. Um, uh, so I, I guess it's working for me. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, okay. So another question that I have for you is what are your thoughts on the coffee culture? Like how long have you been into coffee? What is for me, for instance, it's been about three, four years that I've been like heavily into the coffee culture and the coffee mm-hmm. community. How long has it been for you? And what, what are your thoughts on the coffee culture? Yeah, that's a great question. I've been drink. let me think about this. I have been drinking specialty coffee for about eight years. And uh, I owe a lot to a friend of mine. We did a coffee swap. I had just traveled to Cuba. I grew up drinking black coffee because of my dad and my brother. Mm -hmm. Uh, They drank black Tim Hortons coffee. And so I grew up drinking black coffee. Okay. And okay. so I always appreciated black coffee. And yeah. so I had just traveled to Cuba and I brought home some Cuban coffee uh, because coffee is actually um, a big part of Cuban culture. And I really enjoy the coffee there. They, they do, they, it's wild what they do. And I've never been able, this is a tangent, but I've never been able to reproduce it. So they brew coffee exceptionally strong, like mm-hmm. offensively strong, yeah. usually in a mocha pot. And they'll pour it into like these little espresso style glasses and just fill that glass with sugar, like so much sugar. And so it's just like this little shot of aggressively strong coffee with an offensive amount of sugar. And it's so good. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so I'm turning a short story long, but I, <laughs> I brought home some coffee from Cuba. And then I, a few days later, I traveled actually out your direction. I met some friends in Banff. We were gonna spend a weekend in the mountains. And a friend of mine was coming from uh, the island from Victoria. And he brought, he brought some coffee with him, and I brought coffee with me. And he brought uh, a natural Ethiopian coffee from 49th Parallel. Mm-hmm. And he saw my coffee, and he said, he said, you know what? We should do a coffee swap. He says, you take mine home, and I'll take yours home. So we did. And that coffee changed my I was going to say change my life, which I guess it did um, <laughs> because coffee is Clearly such a big did. part of my life now. Yeah. Um, so it did change my life. Yeah. That coffee was so good. I tasted blueberries in it. And I thought, what in the world is going on? They're, like, how can a coffee taste like this? So it started me on this journey that was about eight years ago. Mm-hmm. So fast forward, I don't know, six years. And I started posting about coffee on Instagram. I'd been brewing a lot with the AeroPress, the Chemex, and the V60 at that point started posting about coffee on Instagram. I've always really liked to write. And, um, and I, so I started a blog a couple of years ago as well. And so I've been like, I've been, I've been deep into it at least for the last few years. Mm-hmm. And like we kind of alluded to earlier, the coffee culture um, on the internet and uh, locally 
um, in, in Canada, in, I mean, in North America, all over Europe, in Australia is just amazing. It's just amazing. I have a shirt, uh, one of my shirts that, that I sell, it just says coffee is community on there. Mm-hmm. And it's one of my best sellers because people know that to be true. If you spent any time in, in this specialty coffee sphere in real life or internet life, yeah. you know that coffee has a way, almost a mystical way of bringing people together. Mm-hmm. And it has done that for me. And the, the coffee culture is in, I'll speak to Canada right now because it's where you and I are both from. The coffee culture in Canada right now is absolutely thriving. Like I am so excited about what's going on in coffee in Canada. I'm so privileged and honored to just be a small part in it. And um, you know, it's conversations like this that we're having. It's conversations like I had today all day on Instagram um, that just remind me that this, this ancient beverage has some sort of mysterious way of bringing people together. And I think even before COVID-19, I think this world could use a little bit more of that, bringing people together. Mm-hmm. And, and now I think especially we're learning that that is positively true. Um, so I'm really thankful for the, for the way coffee coffee culture does that for folks like you and for me yeah i think the what like for me um in terms of coffee culture the one thing that attracted me to it the most like obviously it's the coffee like coffee's great (laughs) it gets me through my day it tastes delicious everything like that but the coffee culture as a whole the one thing that really attracted to me is like you were saying it's 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 kind of a global community and there's all you're so connected with everyone around the world over this bean yeah right it's it's just hot bean juice at the end of the yeah. day. That's all it is. Yeah. But that 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 basic uh, that basic transformation from what it is to what it becomes for us is huge. And yeah. being able to, for instance, I was prior to COVID nineteen, I was supposed to go to Australia, and I was super excited, not just because I get to see some of my friends that are there and like go on vacation. I was just excited to try some of the best coffee in the world. Yeah. And it's known, like it's not, it's not like it's a secret or anything. Everyone knows that Australia has the best coffee in the world and especially Melbourne. Melbourne's coffee is number one everywhere. And I was excited to try that. And I was excited to hear what they thought about the coffee community there and learning mm-hmm. about the coffee community in Melbourne. Right. Yeah. Ours here in Vancouver is growing in Canada. It's growing. It's just, it's expanding um, and I'm, I'm so excited and so happy to be a part of it. All the things that I've seen from when I started being in the community like three, four years ago to now is incredible. Yeah. It's just, it's incredible and in how we've gotten closer together because of it. And again, you and I being able to communicate right, like this, we wouldn't have had this if it wasn't for coffee, quite frankly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's just, it's one of those mo- one of the most supportive and inclusive industries and communities that I've found um, in my thirty years of living. Totally, right? totally. Um, I I haven't. Every person that I've talked to in coffee has come from a different industry and gone mm. into coffee. Yeah. Right. Like you were talking about your history. For me, I'm an accountant through and through. Yeah. Um, and if it wasn't for coffee, our worlds probably wouldn't have collided. Exactly. Um, and for instance, the I I think you know the Vancouver coffee snob. Yep. Um, him and I connected because we were in the same city and reviewing coffee and everything, and we got along. But if it wasn't for coffee, his world is completely different than he's tech. Like, yeah. the world would not have connected. And I feel yeah. like coffee as a whole has connected us in a way that no other industry would have, no other community would have. And I yeah. I just love it because of that. Yeah, me too. And you know what, I I didn't even. I didn't even touch on my favorite part of uh, coffee culture, mm-hmm. which is the humanitarian aspect of it. Mm-hmm. The fact that through the simple choice of you and I choosing to drink better coffee, <laughs> choosing to pay a little bit more money per pound, mm-hmm. um, choosing to intentionally buy coffee from roasters who are building direct relationships with farmers at origin, 
just by those simple decisions that you and I are making. Sure. All the other stuff is great. You know, like coffee festivals, drinking good coffee, having these chats. It's all fun. It's all great. Yeah. But I think the most important part of it all is that those intentional choices that you and I are making mm-hmm. um, have a, a lasting impact on real people's lives. Mm-hmm. People who are born into an agricultural world, which frankly, you and I don't really know much about. I have no idea. You know? <laughs> you and I don't know anything about farming. We're both yeah. born in, in, in big cities. We work in tech, like, like uh, with the internet. We're talking yeah. over the internet right now. Like, yeah. and we blog about coffee. But these folks are, are born into an agricultural society and their, their lives and their, the lives of their children, the inheritance of their children depends on the success of their farming practices. And if you and I aren't making better choices with how we're consuming coffee, it could have a detrimental impact on their life and their future. So the fact that we get to um, positively impact people all over the globe Mm-hmm. and their lives and the lives of their children by drinking better coffee. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what's better than that. The, it, there's nothing. It's, it's, it's the concept of like two birds with one stone, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm all for like my, my, my values, like my core values have always been to try and help people around me. And if I can help people around me, I know that eventually I'll grow with them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and as I'm growing, they'll grow and, and vice versa. And sure. within the community that we're in, it's a very broad, large community. Mm-hmm. And like you said, we're not connected like directly with the yep. farmers. We're not co- collected. We're not connected with, with every single individual that's in the coffee community, but through small choices, small actions that we take, we're actually able to impact their lives in a positive way. And that, yeah. that is an exceptional thing. So I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm really happy that you mentioned that. So good. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay. Now, do you have any, do you have any, like anything that you really wanted to talk about? Anything that you really thought was needed to be said during like the quarantine or anything like whatever it's, it's your space. I've asked my specific questions, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I appreciate that, man. I mean, this is a wild, a really wild time. And I think it's timely that, um, you know, I saw a tweet today that somebody said uh, they were on Amazon and, and it looked like Amazon was all sold out of podcast mics, uh, which is, it's just hilarious. I got um, mine, so I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got mine too. And so, you know, that there's going to be a lot of new projects that are started during this time and a lot of new initiatives, this podcast being one of them. I'm going to start my own podcast. Like we're all going to do it. Um, hey, you let me know if you want me on there, Matt. I'm just, Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but I, I think, I think it's important during this time that we that we lean in to um, community, mm-hmm. and so yeah, that can look like uh, digital community uh, through through Instagram. That can look like uh, a global coffee community. That sure, you'll never meet half of these people in person, mm-hmm. um, but it's real. Uh, but also leaning into your local communities, and and I'm I'm learning, and I've I've done a bit of writing about it for my blog, but just learning how valuable our intention is uh, on a local level. So for, for me, that looks like um, when I need Hario V60 filters, mm-hmm. instead of buying them off Amazon or instead of shipping them to me because I can get them faster, mm-hmm. I'm going to go out of my way to reach out to my local shop. I just did it today. I, I Facebook messaged the owner of my local shop. Um, she was able to go to the shop and get two packs of filters for me. And, and I sent my wife cause I was at home with the baby and, and Rebecca was out, out and about and she stopped by and they did the curbside pickup thing. It was like the opposite of convenient, right? Like the, I usually just get them shipped to the door. Yeah. Um, and so it was the opposite of convenient, but it was, it's the important thing to do because the, your local coffee culture Oh, in whatever city you live in, like this is just true across the board right now. Mm-hmm. Your local coffee culture depends on your intentional um, buying decisions yeah. right now. Yeah. And, and so that looks like buying coffee, uh, curbside pickup, buying coffee locally, um, gear locally. If you've been trying to buy, if you've been wanting to buy merch from a shop but haven't quite yet, just go ahead and buy it now. Yeah. Yeah. Buy a gift card because fun- that functionally works like a loan, right? Yeah. 
buy a hundred dollar gift card if you can afford it and use it later. Mm -hmm. Right. When the shop opens in a few months and, and life kind of, kind of, we find our rhythm again, you're going to use that gift card, but that's going to pay somebody's wage right now. Yeah. So do it now. Um, if you're listening to this podcast and you're like, okay, you know, guys, that sounds like really good. And, and, and maybe you guys have the disposable income for that, but I, I just don't, I lost my job due to COVID and, and I'm just not in that financial position right now to, to fork out $20 for a bag of coffee. I'm, I'm not even drinking coffee right now, but what you can do, and this is really valuable. I was talking to, to, um, a girl named Emily. She roasts, um, for a cafe down in Texas. And she told me this, she's like, what you can do if you can't buy simply share mm -hmm. your local shops posts on Instagram. And she said, you don't understand how valuable that is. If they're running a sale or a promotion, I pick up whatever it is, simply share that to your story. It's literally the easiest thing for you to do. But what happens is it costs you nothing, but let's say, uh, let's say conservatively a hundred people see that story. Yeah. Maybe 10 people buy buy a bag of coffee maybe one person even, it doesn't yeah, matter even if it's one person it's one more than would have and it didn't cost you anything so i think we can all have more of an impact locally during this time than maybe we've considered mm -hmm. and in talking with local business owners here locally in niagara but also in in other areas i'm learning that it's more imperative than we know um, a lot of these businesses uh, actually that woman i was i bought those filters from today she said if our web or I have to close our doors. And so that's just the reality of what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I would just encourage everyone who's listening and, and who, who values their local coffee community. There are ways that you can have a tangible, um, you know, long lasting effect on the vitality of your local coffee industry uh, through your buying choices. But also if you're not buying, you can have, you can have uh, an effect as well. And um, you know, we can, Alfred, we can, we can do this again, yeah. um, whether it's on your podcast or mine, we can talk about coffee all day long. But I, I do think um, during this very unique and strange time we're living through, yeah. um, if I had to say anything to anyone drinking specialty coffee during this time, it would be that. Honestly, I, I couldn't have said it better. Awesome. It's, it's all about the little bit of support that we can give. Um, everyone has their, everyone has their max capacity. Yep. Yeah. Um, but support however you can, basically. Yep. Um, but you you said it more eloquently than I ever could, so <laughs> I I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like honestly, it's it's been a pleasure actually getting to talk to you, um, and not through just random DMs. Yeah, you um, too, man. Feel free to slide into my DMs all you want. It's fine, <laughs> um, and I will do the same. Perfect. Uh, but it was it was really great chatting with you, and it's really great to uh, to actually discuss the coffee community, talk about coffee talk about the world basically yeah um and i'm excited to do it again yeah thanks alfred i, I again i i really i really do appreciate you having me um so much fun to get to chat with you and i, I really do hope we can do it again soon oh for sure well anyways thanks everyone for uh for tuning in uh and uh this was alexander mills go check out his instagram alexander.mills and go check out his website and buy one of those shirts i'm 100% going to buy one of those shows because <laughs> ever since I saw them, they're like on my mind. So I need to get one. I'm going to buy um, one of those too. I oh, love that. I, one you I got you. I got you. Don't, don't worry. Um, we'll, we'll do a shirt swap. It'll be yes. great. <laughs> All right, well, anyways, thank you everyone. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon.